In this tutorial I'm going to be looking at returning values from methods. So the idea that a method can be asked a question and it can give you an answer. And that type of method, that distinguishes two different types of methods or subprograms. You have commands versus queries. Uh, a command is a method that is going to just do something that you ask it to do, whereas a query is a method where you're going to uh, expect the method to provide some useful information back to the calling program. We're, our calling program in this case is going to be the main method and we're going to create a couple of of these um, methods that return values. The typical typical word for those is uh, functions and the command type methods are known as generally known as procedures especially in other programming languages i'm going to talk a bit about the void keyword well we're going to see why we have the void keyword with our main method and we're not going to have the void keyword with our the methods that we're going to be creating in this tutorial and also the importance of descriptive naming which is a theme that runs throughout all of these tutorials on methods and it's something I'm going to cover in even more detail uh, in a later tutorial. So what I'm going to do is let's imagine that I want to, I'm going to create a pretty simple method and sometimes the easiest methods to understand that return values are methods dealing with numbers. And as it turns out, there are actually a, a whole group of methods that deal with numbers and return values that are available to you already, and those are the math methods. So for example, I can say double x, and then I can say x equals math dot sqrt of 5. The, there is a math class that has many methods in it, one of those methods is the square root method and the square root method takes a single parameter the parameter can either be uh, an integer or a double value and it will calculate the square root of that and then it will return the double value that is the answer to that query so essentially what you're doing here is a function this type of method you are asking a question. In this case, I'm asking the question, what is the square root of 5? And that's the difference between a query and a command. In a query, you're expecting an answer in response. And the most typical thing that we do with an answer is we store it in a variable for later use. The way to think about that is, if it's worth asking the question in the first place, then it's probably worth saving its answer. It's not always true, but a lot of times it is. Okay, so there's an example of a, of a method that returns a value. In this case, it returns a numeric value. I'm also going to create a method that returns uh, a maximum value. Finding the maximum between multiple values is a pretty common operation. Quite often we're interested in, if I have two numbers, I'm interested in which of those numbers is the bigger. It's a pretty simple little piece of code to write. So let's imagine that I ask the user, uh, I'm going to create another couple of variables. Let's just get rid of this to clean it up. So int x and y. And I'm going to ask the user to give me in.get int, and that's going to be saved in x. y is equal to in.get int, and that will be saved in y. So I'm asking for a little bit of user interaction here. And then I'm going to have another integer called z and z is going to be the maximum between x and y now I have to be careful here uh, I could have used max that might have been a better name I think that actually that might work but the reason I'm avoiding that is because I'm calling my calling my method max and so I, I don't want to cause any confusion between those and then I might have something like system dot out dot print line z so I'm going to enter two integer values and then I'm going to calculate the maximum of those two integers. So let's see what that would look like as a method declaration. So public, up until now, it's always been public static void max. And in this case, I'm going to give it two integers. 
I'm going to give it an int x and I'm going to give it an int y. But there's a change I have to make here, a pretty significant change. And this explains the void keyword. The void keyword in Java means that I'm not going to give an answer. So essentially that is a command. Anytime you're doing a procedure which just executes commands, that's why it's void. It's not expecting, it's not expected to give an answer back again. But this is a function, this is a query. I'm asking it, I'm going to give it two values and I want it to tell me which one is the bigger value. So rather than void, I have to tell it what kind of value it's going to give back again. And in this case, I gave it two integer values and the answer is going to be an integer value. So that's the meaning of void. Void just means I'm not giving an answer. Here I'm going to give an answer that's an integer. So how do I find the maximum of those two values? If x is bigger than y, so if the first value is bigger than the second value, then I'm going to return x. Else, let me clean that up. I don't quite like the way that looks. Else, I will return y. And how you do this, some people like to line them up that way. I actually think for the purpose of this tutorial, I prefer it this way. So if x is greater than y, I return x. Else, I return y. So one way or another, I'm going to get a maximum value. If x is equal to y, I still want to get the value. I still want to know what is the biggest number. If I give two numbers between 5 and 5, for example, what's the biggest number? Well, the biggest number between those two is still 5. So now I have my, my main program, which allows me to test my method. And then the method itself, which receives two parameters and uses those two parameters to come up with an answer. Notice that I return the values of the parameters directly and this value, the integer return value, is what gets saved in the variable z down here. Another thing to point out, which I commented on in a previous tutorial, is that these variables, the variable names in particular, have absolutely nothing to do with these parameter names. So the fact that these match is irrelevant. I could have easily called these something completely different. I could have called them a and b. So long as my code is consistent in that way, this still will perform exactly the same way. So I just want to emphasize that there is absolutely no relationship between these parameter labels x, y, and z and these parameter, sorry, these variable labels x, y, and z and these parameter labels a and b. When you call max x and y, whatever value the user has given you for these variables x and y, a copy of that gets saved in a and a copy of that gets saved in b and then the operations on a and b take place here and then when we come back to main everything that happened in this max method it's like it never happened at all. The only thing that the only thing that exists after this max method hits a return statement, the only thing that exists is the integer value that gets stored here in the variable z. Every other piece of every other piece of evidence that this max method ever ran has has disappeared. So, let's go ahead and compile that, make sure that it works. I'll save this. And I go ahead and run it. It's looking for some user input. So I'm going to give 3 and I'm going to give 5. So obviously the maximum value of that is 5. If I run it again, but reverse the order, just so you can see that the order doesn't matter. If I give 5 and then 3, it still recognizes the maximum value is 5. And if I run it with duplicate values, 5 and 5, the maximum value is 5. And it is important when you create methods or when you create a program in general, it is important that you give descript sorry descriptive that you test it thoroughly. So there I tested all of my possible combinations. The first one less than the second, the first one greater than the second and the two being equal to each other. Now the only thing I haven't really talked about here is the idea of descriptive naming. When you do a query 
that is a method that is going to answer a particular question. So make sure that you name your method so that when you when you write your code in your main method or in some other method, when you invoke your query function, make sure the name is quite clear what's going to happen here, what you expect to come back. I think this is a very simple name, but it's, it's clear enough. When I say z is equal to the maximum of x and y, it's pretty clear that I'm going to be giving it two values, x and y, and I want to know what the maximum of those values is. And so what's coming out of this is going to be a value that is like x and y, in this case, an integer. Be aware that if I change these to all be doubles, I would start to run into problems because my parameter list expects integers. So there is a requirement there that these things all match each other. I think I'm just going to leave it with a single query function, a single method to answer a query here. And uh, I'm going to close off the tutorial at that point.